All right, so we're recording. Cool. Uh, what's going on today, guys? Uh, today, I really wanted to talk about research, uh, either academic or scientific research, in the context of a global pandemic. With everything that's going on, it's very difficult for a lot of different research topics to to basically continue. Uh, there's facilities that you can't access, and there's all these resources that aren't available now that the pandemic has you know, basically happened. Um, I don't really know a better way to word that, but it is what it is. Research opportunities are really good to bolster your resume. They help you learn the different techniques uh, involved with research, a lot of the things that you can't cover in a class. So they're actually really useful for if you're interested in a higher education past your bachelor's, um, especially for the STEM fields. So it's it becomes important to try and look for these opportunities. You don't always get them, so don't get discouraged if you don't get them, especially in these times, because it's just so difficult to get them in the first place. Now you have the backdrop of the pandemic, so then it, even, it becomes even harder still. So what I'd like to talk about is ways to prepare yourself and ways to, to actually find research opportunities in STEM um, during this time. It's, it's trickier, so we'll figure that out. Or so we'll, so we'll go over that, I guess. So likely if you are looking for research, you're not uh, at the master's or you're not at the graduate level yet because most of the time if you're doing graduate research, it's at the institution that you're studying at. So this talk is more focused towards high school or undergraduate students that are looking to maybe uh, get into the scientific field or just any kind of academic research as a whole. And even this can apply to just finding opportunities in your field in general. Understanding what the research that you're going to be doing is about um, personally is key to your uh, growth. So as a student, what would you, what are your takeaways from research? And it's going to be a lot different than you might think. A lot of people think that they're going into do these research experiences to learn about a specific topic. Um, you know, there's astrophysics REUs, there's different, um, there's many different types of, oh, REUs, research experience for undergrads. So there are a lot of different types of research that one can do as an undergrad or as a high school student. Uh, but the one thing that you want to be aware of is that you're not going to be doing much groundbreaking research at that level. And what it is that you're supposed to be taking away from that are techniques and methods of what kind of things are done during research so that you have a better understanding moving forward when you're actually in the research context, whereas when you're in a research position, I should say. So when you're trying to find research positions, you, you should realize that your end goal is to learn how to do the, the studies themselves. It's not about a specific topic, uh, especially with how much there is not, how much research there isn't going on right now because of just how, how many labs and different facilities are closed. The choices, the options that you have for research are even more limited than they were before. And it's very unlikely that you'll, well, I would say very unlikely. It's not very likely that you'll get the position or you'll get a research opportunity in exactly the right field that you're looking for. It does, it does happen, so keep looking for the things that you want to do, but also be very open-minded to um, different types of research as well. So with that being in mind, in these times, you're going to want to maybe expand what you're willing to do simply because there's less opportunities that might be specific to what you're trying to research in the future. Plus, on top of that, it's always good advice because you, you might find that you like something more than you previously thought. So just be open minded when you're looking for the research. So when you find a research topic that you like, that you think you might be eligible for, look at who is running the program, look and see if there's any information about uh, who's doing that particular research topic, because oftentimes you'll see that the program director isn't the person holding the research or doing the research. They're just kind of hosting the um, 
the research itself so that more people can come in. Uh, or maybe I should say they're facilitating it. So when you're when you find the research opportunity that you're interested in, go ahead and see, do a little digging and see if you can't find out who is running that program or who is uh, doing the research that you're specifically interested in. Email them. Uh, it's, it's very, it's, sometimes it feels intimidating to just go out and email somebody, but it's not a hard thing to do once you're over the fact that it's not a big deal. It's really hard to email somebody and be like, hey, I know you don't know me, but I know you, and it just feels weird because you researched them. And so maybe I'll make a video about how to properly write an email so that you can confidently send it away and not have to worry about it. Because I know a lot of times when I was personally told, hey, you should write an email, I never did because it was a scary thought and I just like held myself back from doing that. So far, we've talked about limiting your options. Um, you tend to do that when you're really excited about one particular topic. You need to take away those limitations so that you can get more out there, so you can actually get more more chances at opportunities now. And then the second thing is, is reaching out to those people running those opportunities so that you can get a better connection with them and see actually, and the idea is that those connections that you're trying to make aren't going to be, hey, can I do research with you? It's more of a, a back and forth to say, hey, I think I might be interested. What is going on? Like, what are you get, what is doing? What are you expecting of students? So it's kind of a back and forth communication to see if one, you are good for the program for them. And two, if, you know, they're actually a good program for you, that you are a person. So it's not just like up to them, whether or not you fit that their qualifications, you want to be able to know if they're good for you as well. Um, a lot of times students don't value their own worth because they don't realize, they don't feel like they're that important. But at the same time, these programs wouldn't run without the students anyway. So do a little shopping and invest time in yourself and invest your own, you know, um, thoughts. You know, it, it's, you're not as unimportant as you might think. So my third and last tip for finding a, uh, opportunities in a pandemic is to simply, because there's not any networking going on right now, um, just be confident that you will find something. You don't give up on it. Um, it can be very discouraging to put out an application and, and not get a response or you get denied. Just know that logically there are so many people trying to do these things and of course you're going to get excited about one in particular because you think it's the perfect one and go go into it knowing that it's nothing personal against you if you don't get the position you might feel like oh i put all this time and effort into explaining this and i you know i wrote the perfect paper as best i could and they didn't accept me that's going to happen. You could write a perfect paper and it just won't pan out. Um, you know, there's a good bit of luck involved with trying to do these applications. And, you know, you think about it. These, these research opportunities might have 50 applicants, maybe less, maybe more. But you're competing for, against 50 people for maybe four or five spots. Um, statistically, that's just not in your favor. So the things that you can do are you, you can work on those applications. You can look at different ways of, of making yourself stand out so that you can improve those chances, but go into it knowing that you're going to have to probably apply to more than just one. You know, it's look for multiple. You can't just get the first one and expect that, oh, well, I applied for it, so I must get it. Um, it's very unlikely that that would happen. So in short, make sure that you're not limiting your options. Try to connect with people uh, before you do the application. See if you're, you're a good fit. See if they're a good fit for you. And don't lose hope just because you didn't get what you were expecting. You didn't, you got rejected, you know. So that's basically all um, 
I'm going to try and keep making videos about how to, to improve these things. So if you're curious, maybe check out the channel um, and see if there's more here for you and stay positive. <laughs> All right. See you guys around.